Hello, this is Laura Cross with an LPAC TV news update. Now before we get into our update, I'd like to reiterate a few very important things. First of all, last night, I'm sure you've all know that Obama announced his proposed budget for fiscal year 2012. Now discussing the specifics of the budget are about as relevant as discussing the specifics of how fluffy or what shade of pink the Easter Bunny's tail is. Neither of them is real. As Ed Hamler discussed in last night's World in Review, the entire universe has changed. Reality is now one where the window of opportunity for the fundamental shift necessary for a reversal of the deadly policies of the past 30 plus years is open, open wide, but for a very short time. And discussion of what to cut here or there, the tough choices, so-called, that Obama is being touted for making, is a deadly distraction from reality. Anyone serious who wants to know what to do in the midst of the collapse must take a long, hard look at the optimistic but precarious opportunity we have before us, which was laid out clearly by Helga Zepp LaRouche this weekend through her written report and video statement, which are both available on the front page of this website. In this statement, Mrs. LaRouche stresses that we are in a time where the international tensions are running high, as seen by the threats of food riots internationally, the rejection of an IMF hyperinflationary policy in Egypt, and the first serious institutional response to the economic crisis through the Angelides report. In this dynamic, what is needed now is a dramatic change in policy to prevent the unleashing of chaos, which is, in is inevitable otherwise exemplified by the food riots in Bolivia and the potential for more food riots hitting Mexico and Central America, as covered in this morning's While You Were Sleeping. Also lending a large hand to the chaos is the speculation of wheat and other commodities, which has devastating effects for import-dependent nations internationally, as dramatically played out in Tunisia and Egypt over the past month. This brings me to our current update. The crime against humanity being perpetrated right now causing food prices to go through the roof, is coming from nowhere else than from the monetary speculative policies of Ben Bernanke and his ilk. Many around the world have already identified the Fed's quantitative easing policy as a driver of food inflation, and they're right. This is no longer a matter of financial policy, nor was it ever, really. This is a matter of life and death, and therefore it's a moral issue. What is needed now is an immediate cap on food prices and regulation on speculation to drive these speculators out. The latest news comes from France, where President Sarkozy is not feeling so cozy about his position as president. It's reported by La Canard in France that if Sarkozy really wants to stay popular, He'd better use his voice at the upcoming G20 meeting to attack the banking giants that are speculating on food, given the current food crisis. Banking giants like BNP Paribas. BNP, for example, set up in London a subsidiary specializing in high-risk commodity trading called Harewood Asset Management. BNP also advises top clients to invest in the Luxembourg-based OptiHedge, another speculative operation on commodities, including food. From their side, Societe Generale and Credit Agricole propose to their clients to invest in exchange-traded funds, or ETF, which are kinds of derivatives, also called trackers, which can be traded as normal stocks, and follow price evolutions of basic commodities and allow speculation on wheat, soy, cotton, sugar, and maize. While future contracts still allow firms to buy goods at a given price and on a given moment, ETFs are completely decoupled from any physical action. But since they are the ones, and not hungry people, who increase so-called demand on the markets, they contribute massively to the skyrocketing of food prices. Societe Generale, through its affiliate Luxor, offers a wide range of these trackers on basic commodities, and so does Credit Agricole with its affiliate, Amundi, which sells a tracker called ETF Commodities GCSI Agriculture, whose performance increased by 84% since 2010. And by performance, they don't mean increasing productivity. They mean increasing the killing that is being made by manipulating food prices. 
So that's what you've got, the piling up of monopoly money, paper, relative to a decreasing of food production, along with the hyperinflationary policies of this system. This is a recipe for an hyperinflationary blowout of the world economy, what we are seeing right now all across the globe, and the death of the bulk of the world's population. So this is just one example of the character of this entire system. And as the FCIC report documents the collapse of the U.S. system, it's the entire system that's the problem. So we need to act now. No more excuses. Cap these food prices, shut down the speculation, and shut down this monetary system. That's all for now. Stay tuned to LPAC TV for more, including an on-the-ground report tomorrow from the Congressional Hearings on the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission report.